Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. Oh, I can't I can't do high socks. My sensory issues would never. That's the one difference between the two of us is the height of our socks. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I even have a black tank top on. Oh no, I don't. I took it off. Never mind. I almost had a blank type blank tank top blank on the light debate. Have you so spooky? Oh. I was like, well, I just pulled a blanket and this attacked my mouth. Did it mess my lipstick up? No, you look good. <laughs> I'm looking like, at like looking in a mirror. <laughs> Happy <laughs> Halloween! You Are guys? you fucking spooked? Yeah, you should be spooked. Because there's, there's two of us on this couch. Which one's the real one? There's twice the CC on the couch. <laughs> so scary. This is the episode where everyone finds out which one of us was actually real. Oh my god. <laughs> you don't tell me the whole time. <laughs> I and knew it was always me. Who I really was. Now I see clearly now the I'm mentally ill. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Here's a couple things. Speaking of mental illness. Oh, I thought we should we What's, What's up, up, everyone? Hello. All right, mental I illness. Did that with we that happy Halloween, but no. I guess you guys need. You can't say <laughs> what you Happy need. Halloween instead of what's up, hello. You're right. What's what up, boo, boo, boobies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, mm-hmm. Grey's Anatomy. That's where I'm at mentally. That's where I'm at physically. That's where I'm at sexually. <laughs> Grace Anatomy, I'm doing it again. That's how I can always tell that something is wrong with me on the inside. Is when mm-hmm. I'm like, I just got the itch to make myself hurt, to yes. make myself cry. Yes. And so, anyways, I'm binging Grace Anatomy again. It's the theme, and um, it hurts more and more every <laughs> every rewatch. It's the theme, not of the episode, just of where we're at in our life right now. Yeah. We, because I am you. Yeah. <laughs> and you are me. <laughs> that is true. But when I don't want to cry and I want to be happy, do you know what else I'm hyper fixated on? No. I mean, yes. Fucking. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you just try to guess what I say this entire time. It was like imagine? the one, two, three game. Oh. oh, my God. Me and Corey have been playing that. And really? honestly, we are fucking slaying, like killing it. I don't know. You and I did really well that one time. We've been getting it after two every single time. Okay, you want to try? Rick, let's play it. Okay. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. One, one, two, three, three scalpel. scalpel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were talking about Grey's Anatomy. Well, I was also <laughs> looking at the plant behind you. Well, now it's okay. weird. Okay, plant now gonna... <laughs> Okay. I know. <laughs> I don't know where to go from there. There's no way we're getting it on two. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, plant and scalpel. Okay. Okay, I have it. Okay, I have it. You do? I sure do. You better get it, bitch. Okay. One, two, two three, three. Nursery. Science. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a nursery. There's a nursery at the hospital, but that's also where you get plants. Okay, I was thinking science because both of those nursery, have to do with science. Science. Okay. Okay. Wait, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nursery science. Okay. One, One two, two, three, three babies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I got you this time. I got you this time. Ready? Okay. One, One two, two, three, three back babies. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't have it that time. And I panicked. This is this is me. <laughs> How hey. Happy how, Halloween, how are everybody? we the same person if we can't even fucking get this right? If anything, this proves more that we're the <laughs> same person. This is what I would do to myself all the time. That's true. That's why we can't sleep. This is called trying to make a decision in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's rough up here for us. It really is. God damn it. I feel like the more I pretend to be you throughout this, like you're speaking to yourself, the more disorienting <laughs> it's going to get for you. I'm honestly kind of fucked up already. <laughs> and I like it. Okay. I do. I want to be a friend in the shop and in the and they like it. I do. The other thing that I like is I follow this person on TikTok. Mm-hmm. The name is at Pixarella. Okay. P I X E R. Oh, your other hyper fixation. This is where I was going with this. Mm-hmm. So she does sim streaming, and I fully tried to show <laughs> Jerry this the other day, but I didn't let you get as involved as you should have. I'm deep, deep. Into you are it. deep. Um, 
So recently, I mean, she does a lot of things, but like she did a whole challenge where it was like breed out the Farquaad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she had the full Shrek cast. Yeah. And she tried to get the Farquaad. Make sure there was no out. genetic Farquaad resemblance. But now it's so unhinged because there's so many different characters now because yes. she ages up the babies like immediately. Yes. Which, by the way. It's really unlocking. I don't know why for some reason. This might be the like um what am I trying to say here? The kid in me that wants to be the people pleaser, that wants to be yes. like I can do this correctly. I yes. can do this right. I've always ever played Sims the way that like life happens. It was designed, yes. And like watching her, I'm like, "Hey, I could have been having fun. I could be playing so many different ways because now you could be causing chaos." It's so unhinged. Yes. <laughs> the shit that's happening. And there's a lot of different mods and any uh, so anyways, I've just been playing a lot. I watched a full <laughs> last night. I was on her live for an hour uh-huh. on TikTok live watching her have a wedding between Farkley, <laughs> Lord Farquaad's son. Right. Um, with Doris, the ugly stepsister. Yes. And he got married to Shrek Kunzel, who mm. is Shrek so Fiona died. Fiona also fucked Farkley. Weird. Okay. But right. Fiona and Shrek never actually had a baby. Interesting. I know because Fiona died when their baby, so Fiona <laughs> and Farkley's baby, Shakira, was in labor and her mom died from right. laughing too hard. <laughs> she laughed too hard that she died? She laughed so hard she died. That's how I want to go. I'm saying. So because of that, Fiona was dead. Okay. Yeah. And so then Shrek got with, I think, Shakira's daughter, which was Farquet. <laughs> Uh-huh. It was a whole fucking thing. I feel like there needs to be some kind of a chart. But that, and there is. You got to see it. There's a whole fucking. It family should be tree. a. It's a wreath at this point. Ew. It's a family wreath. Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, no. Not more incest no, no, no. jokes. To be fair. <laughs> they never land. They never land. <laughs> to be fair. Barkley and Shrek Hunzel are not related because Shrek Hunzel is. After Fiona died, Shrek got remarried oh. to three different people. Was Snow he White? ever married to I think Fiona? So. Yes. She died. Oh. So you got married to Rapunzel, mm-hmm. Snow White, mm-hmm. and a third that I think might be Sleeping Beauty. Okay. I can't remember. She's not awake yet, so we can't ask. We sure. do, I do, who knows? Right. <laughs> All I know is that he had Shrek Hunzel. Okay. Um, and they go to, he also owns a strip club. It's called Far, Far Away From Your Wife. <laughs> correct. Correct. As Fucking one does. So awesome. Uh-huh. Anyways, so Shrek Hunzel and Farkley, they had a wedding. A fucking werewolf showed up. It was, he was running around. I thought he was going to full on just start fucking killing people. Right. He didn't. It was good. But then Farkley got mad at Shrek Hunzel because he thought she was flirting with the bartender or the cake person. She wasn't. Okay. Then we find out because we get them home. The cake tender. To their, <laughs> the cake tender. <laughs> we, like I'm the one playing. <laughs> she I gets, was also there. I was invited to the wedding. I followed them back. <laughs> Someone's got to deliver the gifts. <laughs> she gets them home to their second swamp sh- uh-huh a new swamp because you can go and like download all of these fucking things that people make right which you got to get on there you got to start making houses and put them up on this thing <gasps> in my free time you fucking do you do good work i know anyways so she downloaded the swamp mm-hmm. they're there it's time to woohoo they're not farkley is just trampsing around in the fart pond <laughs> It doesn't make a lot of sense. Why are you in the stinky pond? <laughs> right. Swamp pond. You should yeah. be fucking your wife. We find out, we, me and her, <laughs> that his interest, he's not even attracted to <laughs> Shrek Gunzel. Well, he married her, but he's not attracted. So fuck Farkley 2023. <laughs> That's what so we know. <laughs> is he not? Oh, they woohooed. Okay. They did it. But he's Katie real. Wasn't happy about he's it. a real piece of shit because then I don't know when you get like the one birth mod, um, uh-huh. it's like the realistic childbirth. Mm-hmm. You can have them in labor swaying together. Mm-hmm. And he's <laughs> he wouldn't be his full fingertips. <laughs> so don't you fucking touch me. I was like, you won't even touch me. <laughs> oh. So anyways, that's what I've been doing with my free time. I realized because I used to like joke around with Corey when we would watch Noah because he used to be really into watching other people play video games. Yes. And I was like, this kid, like, just play a it. video game. You're watching other people play. 
Turns out it's so fucking mm-hmm. fun. I feel like every time I, like, when I got into ASMR, you were like, that sounds kind of fucking weird mm-hmm. and a little sexual. And then you started listening and you're like, I'm into that. I think I love it. And then I started telling you about Plum Bella and you were like, you just mm. watch her just play. And now, yeah, turns out you just have to find your own niche. Yes. And yours is Shrek Core, I guess. <laughs> I guess. It really is. She's got a lot of different. She's going to start a SpongeBob one. Oh, I'm you're going to Very like excited. That. It's going to be Breed Out the Squidward. <laughs> I can't fucking wait. Ow. Ow, no. Ow. So, Pixarella on TikTok, if you want to look. I think she also is on YouTube somewhere, but uh, that's mm-hmm. I follow her mainly on um, TikTok. Shout well, out. That's good stuff. I love it. And I hope that you like it too. And I found her because we were being tagged so much in her videos. I actually reached out to her. Well, she I subscribed to her and she like yeah. thanked me and then gave me her mod list for subscribing. So nice. That is so, so nice. So if you want any of these mods, I have all the ones that she uses to get all this fun stuff that happens. Anyways. I'm going to have to get a higher powered computer. Yeah. And also you're going to see a wiener if you download some of them. So we're maybe you don't want to. Because some of them are just like... I've never seen a wiener before in my, my life. life. <laughs> for my ma. <laughs> but uh, she was like, oh my God, I wondered who you were because I saw them tagging you a lot in my um, co- yes. in my comments. And so thank you to everybody who tagged me. You know exactly what mommy like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. anyways, what's up with you? Besides the fact that you're well, trying to be... <laughs> you're wearing my skin I've today. just been doing it froggy style with my husband Corey <laughs> in the <laughs> closet. <laughs> We called him. We FaceTimed him earlier. What did he say to you? He was like, "Oh yeah, I was because he goes, yeah, dress like that more often." He said, "You you said you thought it was me for or Sierra for a second. He's like, "Yeah, I was gonna hit on you. I was kind of indie." He goes, "Uh, thought I was in love with you for a yeah, second. Yeah, that's what he said. I thought I was in love with you for a second. <laughs> um, no, uh, my kids have been sick, so that's been fun. Um, Same. Ollie has had a fever, mm-hmm. and so he's been up a lot of the evening. He won't take he won't take medicine." Really, because my daughter could drink it out of the bottle at this point. She's a. I wish she. I wish she screams when it it's like out, and I'm like, I can't give you any more Tylenol. She loves the way it tastes. Yeah, Ollie. What's wrong with it, it? I know, I know. It like it when I used to like be able to squirt it in their mouth mm-hmm. with the like the little syringe. That was way easier yeah. because you'd just squirt it on their cheek, and like instinct would do the rest. Yeah. But now that he um can actually consent mm-hmm. to things he's like absolutely the fuck not like, and he'll okay, suffer there. then <laughs> he'll sit there with like a 102 degree fever yeah. and i'm like do you want to take some medicine and he goes i'm okay oh i'm okay and i'm like you're, you're like, not okay, okay in the cold bath for you yeah so that's what i had to tell my kids i was like you can either take the medicine or you're gonna have to sit in a cold bath because either way i gotta get your temp down yeah that's just what has to happen he's been rocking a cold washcloth on his head and there so he's go. been cuddling with me a lot but then the other night he started hysterically laughing in the middle of the night which mm. worried us because yeah. i'm like has your fever peaked so much that now you're, you're losing de- like <laughs> delirious you're in hysteria yeah so I'm trying to get him to respond. I'm like, are you okay? What's going on? Why are you laughing? Just asking so many questions, not even giving him time to process an answer. Um, And Shane's aunt, uh, who has since passed, she actually had a fever that was so high that it caused um, like permanent brain damage. Mm -hmm. And so she was um, actually in like assisted living and she uh, lived with disabilities for her entirety of her life. That's why I don't fuck around with fevers. I know. Like I, I know. I I know that I remember one time with Sawyer, I was like, I shouldn't be giving you an ice bath right now because it makes me sad that you're screaming. But Mm -hmm. with Nurse Corey, he's like, we don't fuck with fevers. I know. We make them uncomfortable if we have to. I knew why Shane was worried about about this Um, and being like, not aggressive, but just being like, you need to talk to me, kid. I need to understand why the fuck you're laughing. Yes. And so I said, Shane, can you go to the kitchen and just get a wet washcloth so we can put it on his head and so he leaves to do that and ollie starts crying and mm-hmm. i said are you okay buddy what's wrong and he didn't say anything and i said did daddy scare you and he goes yeah and i said daddy's just worried about you honey he wants to make sure you're okay we didn't understand why you were laughing yeah and so he was speaking to me then he was making in tongues he, <laughs> no, he, was, he was answering my question so i felt like okay he's at least here yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah receptive um and then i continued to check his temperature throughout the night it broke. Um, and so the next morning I came up to him and I was like, do you remember laughing last night? And he was like, yeah. And I said, what were you laughing about? And he goes, I thought I heard a fart. <laughs> Fair so enough. So last night, last night was he's you? in bed again. 
Oh. And I hear Shane fart. And I'm like, well, maybe the kid did hear a fart. <laughs> maybe he did. And that's Honestly, what happened. Honestly, nothing that's going to put me into a fever giggle. Mm-hmm. More like a fart. I know. And so Ollie, because the um, wet washcloth, which he again had on last night, uh, got the pillow wet where he was laying. He was like, I want to go back and sleep in my room. And I was like, dope. I would love for you not to sleep Get out of here, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Because he wants to be on top of me and he's a thousand degrees. Oh, so. well, that's when Sawyer's fever before it broke. Cause Ooh. she sleeps with us. She mm-hmm. was like a literal heat pad oven. Yep. And I'm like, hey, uh-huh. so I take him back to his bed. Not 10 minutes later, Forrest comes in and mm-hmm. I hear the little pitter patter of his feet and I hear him that he's scared mm-hmm. and he wants to sleep with us. Because of the shadows in his room. Oh! I absolutely s- not. I say, huh? And he said, I'm scared of the shadows in my room. Can I sleep in your bed? And I was like, yes, climb on up here. And he goes, I'm not scared of mommy shadow or daddy shadow or Ollie's shadow, but the scary shadows in my room. I don't want to be in my room. And You're I like, was like, talk less. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut hey, up. look at me. You want to stay in here? You shut up. <laughs> you shut up about the scary shadows in your room. So, well, what a fucking segue. I know it. I thought thanks for the content, baby doll. Yeah, yeah. And also shut up with shut your... Up, we'll go. <laughs> no, you better stop that. I know. So I was... then I panicked because I'm like, okay, so one of my kids has a fever and the other one's seeing shadows. You know where I'm drawing a conclusion here. That we're under attack. <laughs> By some kind of a D word. Yeah, I'm saying, dude. <laughs> Okay, so Ooh. I'm a, I'm afraid. Let's just get that. <laughs> Sorry Let's to move my bangs. Out. Hey, Jerry was like, you didn't say anything about your bangs, but last episode felt like the wrong time to do it. But like, <laughs> I just want to say, PSA, thanks for everyone saying stuff about the bangs. Um, it might not seem like a lot, but I think they're changing my life. <laughs> I think they're saving me in a weird way. They've changed my life. Truly. <laughs> I feel so different right now. Don't you? (laughs) You're like a new woman. I do. And it's it's not because it's jet black. (laughs) No, it's certainly not. Mm -hmm. You need some blue in it. I don't know if you can see my blue right now. I tried to find. I have just the teensiest amount and like a little peekaboo wig. So I think it's cute. I tried to find some blue extensions that I could put in there. But I know. I know. I was limited with my choices. Yeah. No, it looks good. What you're rocking right now. It really is a peak me. Mm -hmm. Um, I need bigger teeth. And that's not that's not saying you have big teeth. Wow. <laughs> it's um I have Oh, it's a fire it's a f- fired shots of shots fired. Shots fired. I have an incredibly small mouth. It's yeah. like so <laughs> narrow. My mouth is big as fuck. And my teeth are so little. I have like equal amounts gum and teeth. Yeah. And so I feel like that is the real tell other than my blue blue eyes. <laughs> that yeah. I'm not you. And the eyebrows probably a little. Well, the, I feel like the eyebrows are covered. They are hidden. A little bit. Which is why. I, oh, yeah. Especially the Bay Yanks. That. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. I'm I sorry. About, uh, the no, it's okay. It's <laughs> I really just wanted to highlight how little mine were. But then I remember. By talking about how big yours <laughs> Then I remembered you have an insecurity. No, I think you have a perfect sized teeth. A- cool. <laughs> I feel like we should just stop talking about it. They're getting better. They're getting better. Honestly, my Invisalign, I can't wait for it to be over. I think it's going to be in like six months, maybe Mm -hmm. four. Who knows? Okay. And I'm very ready because they took off my bumps for my wedding. They put Mm -hmm. them back on, which was annoying. But like it gave me a little bit of a glimpse of what I could get to. And it was a sliding. Mm -hmm. All right. Time for the spookies, you fucking bitches. We're getting the spookies. All right, my spooky. Hang on. Sorry. (laughs) My landscaper said, I'll send you a new Venom. My wife's has been hacked, but he meant Venmo. <laughs> You're like, like I don't want any Venom. 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 I'm not trying to catch the smoke. Like, what? Hell? Yeah, because he's doing my flower beds for me, and I was like, thank you. That's nice. And I pay him on his wife's <laughs> Venom. <laughs> I pay him in wife Venom. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, no, here we don't. Yes. Here we do. <laughs> Here we do. <laughs> okay. I have some fun ones, some spooky ones, mostly spooky. Okay, here we go. I'm what do you want? Spooked. What do you want? I'm going to let dealer's choice. Wait, no, that would be me. I'm the dealer. <laughs> you are the dealer. So <laughs> what are you? you? Recipient's choice. <laughs> I'm also you, though. Zero choice. <laughs> All right. Do you want a ghost story? Do you want a 
Shadow story. Shadow? Do you want a sleep paralysis story? Do you want a UFO story? Do you want a sleepwalking story? I don't want any of them, but I think that because Forrest walked in talking about shadow people that I should we should you go shadow. It. Here we go. Hi, ladies. My name is Maddie She Her, and you are welcome to use my name because there are literally a million of us out there. <laughs> I've been a listener for probably over a year now and embarrassingly binged all of your past episode in much, much less time. I'm hoping that my little tale finds you well and that it gives you a little spook. My story takes place in a town where I went to college. I believe it was my junior year. I also want to say that I've also been a little bit sick. So if at any point I start to sound nasally, I'm so fucking sorry. I know that annoys people. It's annoying me too. Okay, but bear with me. We are... We are we're just going to have to soldier on. Listen, we're trudging through. Mm-hmm. You going to cry? I am having a bit of post-nasal drip. Ew. I know. <laughs> and why I told you that was because it does make me gag. <laughs> so right there, I was trying really hard not to pull on gag. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Two of my friends, we'll call them A and J, were mm-hmm. roommates for most of college, and we all worked together at the local pizza place, so I spent a lot of time at their house. One day. We had decided to go to lunch. I had to pee, so A and J said they would meet me in the car and to lock the door on my way out. Walking down the hall from the living room, J's room was on the left, A's room was on the right, okay, and the hallway was, or the bathroom was right in the middle. After I go pee, I'm walking to the front door, and as I pass J's room, something catches my eye, and I stop. Looking into her open closet, I don't see anything out of the ordinary, just hanging clothes and a variety of shoes lining the floor. As I look closer, I see a set of shoes that do not look like the others. They are large, black leather men's dress shoes. Glancing up, I see the shoes are connected to a pair of dress pants that seem to go on forever with just the ends of a petticoat barely visible at the top of the closet. (gasps) Such a tall person. That's a tall, tall person. Such a tall person. (laughs) This person or spirit or whatever my brain conceptualized it as the time had to be over eight feet tall, unnaturally standing inside of the closet. Imagine you go one floor up and it's it's just his head (laughs) by the shoes. (laughs) As if that weren't unnerving enough, it was the emptiest blackness I've ever seen, as if it was swallowing everything around it. I figured that was enough for me and and got the fuck right out of there running to the car. I climbed into the back seat and slammed the door, pale and out of breath. A and J turn around and look at me curiously, asking me what had happened. As I'm explaining to them what I saw, I'm sure that they'll think I'm crazy or chalk up what I saw to smoking too much meat. <laughs> As I conclude, that's fucking more scary that they were high when they saw this. Well, yeah, because yeah. Mm. Although I feel like there's two kinds of people. One, who it's their anxiety is going to be exacerbated by the fact that they're high. Mm-hmm. Or two, someone who can still kind of like intellectualize the situation and be like, oh, maybe I'm just hallucinating. I'm just seeing things. Not me. <laughs> Turns out. Um, as I conclude my story, they go silent and their faces drop. They <gasps> look at each other and say, oh, my God, you saw him, too. How long has he been there? I know. Is he going to pay rent? <laughs> hey. You're really tall. Could you reach into the shelves, please? Could you make yourself useful? Yeah. This was the first I had ever heard of their experience with the shadow man, but he apparently had made his appearance on more than one occasion before and had been known to literally take things from them around the house, like open beers, and hide them. Uh, my roommate and I had something that would take toilet paper and hide it, and then or our phones, and then what? it would be on top of like the toilet paper in oh, the that's bathroom. So weird. Yeah. They confirm what I saw down to his unnaturally tall figure and his clothing, though they added that he also wore a square brimmed hat. After some deep diving on Reddit, we came across the myth of the Hat Man. Aside from the consumption of unsafe amounts of Benadryl to conjure him up, the parallels were uncanny. Bitch, are you aware that Hat Man is in Hill House? What? Yes, I've been trying to get Sierra to watch Hill House all week. I just really she... Lil John the fuck out of that. <laughs> what? She conveniently always has to pick her kid up from school. I do. I'm sorry. Next, Next week. week. Next week, it's but hat hey, man. and also we're going on a trip together. That's true. We can make the guys sit together. <laughs> we can sit together on the plane. Watch Hill House. <laughs> Pretend. Yeah, that's what you need to watch when you're already anxious. I think I shouldn't. Being on a plane. <laughs> I think I shouldn't. I'm going to stick to Grey's Anatomy where nothing bad ever happens. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, not several plane crashes. Not a plane crash for sure. Good lord. Um, A and J have since moved out of the house and we have all graduated, but we will always wonder why the hat man wanted to make himself known to us. Also, in case you were wondering, no, the disappearing beer was never found. Thank you, ladies, for taking the time to read this, even if it doesn't make it on the podcast. I hope it gave you some goosebumps. Love you both so much, and you make my Tuesdays so much brighter. Keep doing Aww. what you're doing. Well, thank you for scaring the the piss the out Jesus of me. Jesus out of us. My, all the piss out of this piss girl. <laughs> piss ghetto. Well, now I'm like wanting to go in Forrest's closet and see like what's in there. But he's got lots of shelves, so oh. that would be weird. And I saw shadows when I was a little kid, and also as an adult, which I think were actually... Yeah. Not great things. But when I was a kid, I think some of it was an imagination that I had where I was like, really? No. (laughs) I was just trying to make you feel better. Sometimes I see shadows when I'm driving at night, but that's my astigmatism. Yeah. Usually they're trees, but like from a distance, I think it's a person. So true. So true. In the median. I'm about to freak you the fuck out. Are you ready? Yeah. Actually, I'm just going to say that for all these because there's not a one of these that aren't like a little bit spooky or else why the fuck would I add them? True Okay. That. Hi, ladies. This is kind of long, so I'm going to jump straight into it. But I love the show. You're both great. Yada, yada. <laughs> so my sister, Sam, she, her, 28 or 29, and I, Hannah, she, her, 23, own a duplex together about an hour south of Cleveland. And if you don't know, it, a duplex is a large house that's divided into two separate apartments. Mm-hmm. They put that in there just in case anybody. So my sister lives in the first floor apartment and I live in the top floor apartment. We don't share any living space, just the back entry hall and a basement with some storage and laundry. Anyways, the story takes place in the summer of 2022. Sam and I went to see Rod Stewart at Blossom Music Center. <laughs> Love a good concert at Blossom. Hell yeah. And we got home super late, like 1 a.m. or so. When I go out to concerts, I wear a clear fanny pack to hold keys, cars, cards, etc. for us to make things easier. When we get home, we're both up past our bedtimes and I didn't want to go through the hassle of getting her stuff separated from mine. So I told her I'd leave my door unlocked and she could just grab it in the morning and I'd leave it in the front of my door that in front of my door. That way she didn't have to wake me up to go get her stuff. So we go to our separate apartments and I promptly pass out. The next morning around 930, I hear my door open and someone walking up my stairs. In my apartment, you open my front door into a set of stairs that go up to my apartment. Right. At first, I was just waiting for Sam to get her stuff and leave to fall back asleep. But then she called my name. By the way, I sleep in the nude. Same. And I have horrible vision. Same. (laughs) I've been meaning to talk to you about sleeping in the nude. Mm. Because I did it a couple times and I thought, why was I such a hater? It's nice, right? And I also have gone underpantsless a yeah. few times. And yeah. also, I'm like, why was I such a hater? Oh, boy. So if you guys heard me talking shit a bit back about worrying about discharge and, and things crawling up, that I am not that girl any longer. It never happens to me in my sleep, surprisingly enough. Discharge or things crawling in? Well, either one that I know of, <laughs> to my knowledge. It's just my husband who sleepwalks and s- it tickles your feet. Tr- grabs me in places. Yeah. <laughs> Creeps me out. But yeah. Anyway, oh, I've just freeing. been thinking about it constantly, how I, I needed to update everyone that I'm no longer a hater and oh, that I nice. no longer stand by what I said then. Yeah. It's good stuff. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> like- or the light side, <laughs> whatever you want to see it. There's Faith 2.0 and there's also Sleep Naked 2.0. That's, <laughs> We're going to do these it. These are my truths. <laughs> um, okay, so their vision is like negative 5.7 and negative 6.5 if you understand vision. No. In that case, mine is negative 7, 7.25 and negative 8. So like they're very close to mine. And you know how like horribly. You can't see anything. Literally, I, I can see colors. No shapes, nothing. And mm-hmm. so that's about where they're at. That's so cute. I know. Basically, I can't see shit in front of me. No matter how big it is, it's blurry as fuck. I say that to preface that I had to put my glasses and ra- on and wrap myself in a blanket. So I'm up. I'm aware. And I'm hearing her call my name. I go out and I ask her how hard it is to look down and find her shit. <laughs> Such a sister move. How fucking hard is it to just get your stuff? I said I wanted to sleep. Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't remember exactly what she said, but something along the lines of, oh, my bad, I'll just grab it on my way out and some other bullshit type of filler. Like, I hope you're not feeling too bad after drinking last night. So I say, okay, grab it and I'll see you later. Okay, fuck you. Okay, Okay, bye. bye. (laughs) Fucking I'm tired. I'm tired and I want to get back in bed. So I turn and walk away as I hear her walk down the steps out of my apartment right past the pile of her shit. So I assume she grabbed it. Around 1030, I wake back up and 
um, decide to go drink my coffee outside. But as I go downstairs to go outside, I see my dumbass sister's stuff still sitting there. I grab it and I go to her apartment. She's in the living room and I wave her stuff in the air like, um, what's wrong with you? She looks at me calmly and confused and says, oh, thanks for bringing my stuff down. Sorry, I just got up. I would have gotten it eventually. My jaw hits the floor faster than my ass when I hear 2000s r and <laughs> I explained like, mm-hmm. mm, no, you just came upstairs like an hour ago to get it. She again denies even being awake. I told her, no, you were in your teal flounder, <gasps> yellow fish like the Little Mermaid. Yeah. Your teal flounder shorts and your white tank top. Like she saw this person. Yes. She looks at me with the most confused and serious look on her face and says, I haven't seen those shorts in like over a month. At this point, because they've been stolen by a ghost. <laughs> at this point, I didn't like the vibe. So I said, OK, never mind. I'm just going outside. Put her stuff down and tried to ignore every intrusive thought. Now that you can make your own thoughts, jokes and assumptions, my family has owned this house since the mid 1980s. That's not actually as bad as I thought it was going to be, but still. That's a long time. Between it being in the family and a rental property as a duplex, there have been so many people in and out of there, and almost every single one of them has had some kind of a ghost story. My aunt, who owned the house at one point, actually wrote a book about the house, slash my family being haunted. I don't want to share it unless you specifically reach out, because although each story does have truth in it, she fluffed it a bit for the book, so I don't think it does justice to the legitimacy of the stories. Fair. All, what a fair yeah. thing to say. Love that. I wouldn't have told anyone. I wouldn't I'd have, have been either. like, my aunt, so who real. is definitely not giving me a cut of the profits, <laughs> is- wrote the most authentically scary book in existence. Yes. All this to say, I have so many ghost stories after living here for most of my life. And this one truly shook me to my core because I talked to her, saw her, and the shorts are still missing a year later. That's so fucking wild. That's weird. Especially because they were weird. Wearing such a specific piece of clothing. Uh huh. I hope you beauties enjoy the story. Keep being positive lights in the world. Ah! I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Yeah. So there's that story. Yikes. How are we feeling? How are we feeling? I feel weird because I don't feel scared. And maybe it's because it's daytime and we're not in my basement. That's true. How are you all feeling? Yeah. Scared yet? Maybe I didn't pick super scary ones. Okay. This one might do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just buckle up, bitch. Here I go. Uh, okay, bet. <laughs> maybe it's because I'm you and I've already read these stories. <gasps> so true. So true, <laughs> bestie. <laughs> that could be it. Okay. Hi, ladies. My name is... Okay. What? My name is who? <laughs> My name is Chicka Chicka. I want to say it's Mari because she, her. Uh huh. You guys have already read one of my stories on Patreon before. What up, fuckable bunnies? And you ask how to pronounce my name, and it is, okay, and they say M A R dash E. So you would assume that's Mari, correct? Yes. Okay, Mari. Yes. Here we go. Anyways, time to talk about the time that a haunted doll begged me to take it home. No. Ha! Ah! No. <laughs> No, <laughs> let me tell you, I oh, started you're gonna hate this one. being so fucking disoriented the mm-hmm. second I went into Spirit Halloween to get this wig <laughs> because there were so many dolls things that I was like, I just don't feel comfortable no, I don't in like this it. old this. It used to be uh, what, what did it used to be? Do that to me with your fingers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. JC Penny's. No, it's not. It's at the Bueller's. What? It's the old tool tool place. I also don't love the fucking music that's playing outside. I need <laughs> you guys to so listen. It's scary. Ugh. You said you want to be scared. I don't. I need you guys to know that for some reason, I don't know if there's always been speakers right outside of our building, but they're all like of a sudden. blasting the music now? Yes. There's three speakers facing directly towards our building, blasting music, and it goes from Starships by Nicki Minaj <laughs> Or Hot and Cold by Katy Perry to fucking like, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. It'll be like, <laughs> it's, and it's like, ah! it's terrifying. Or an old man like cry singing. I don't know, man. It's fucking scary. Yeah. And it's what's happening right now it while is. you're telling this story. Mm-hmm. But yeah, whenever I went to buy the wig, they were like, are you so excited for Halloween? And I went. Mm. yeah <laughs> yeah it's my favorite yeah and they're like you don't have to say yes and I was like well I I mean I feel like I have to care about it because my kids love it and they're yeah. like you don't have to just because we're spirit Halloween doesn't mean that you can't like something else better and I was like 
I just I like almost everything better if I'm being (laughs) honest spirit totally for real with you you want to talk some shit I will talk real talk with you I actually feel like I might pass out being in this space right now (laughs) I'm so scared yeah all right here we go um so for some background information I collect vintage dolls good for you couldn't be me could not be me sunglasses (laughs) are you used to yeah you did you really did I think the difference between collecting and hoarding is it's very it's a very thin line my line (laughs) and mine was just I felt guilty throwing things away so I think I was more hoarding sunglasses but anyway yeah collecting dolls (laughs) when I say vintage I mean like early 1900s porcelain dolls I always get mine from estate sales or yard sales but decided to go to the thrift store to check those ones out over there at the thrift store, I was looking at all of the dolls, and there was this one that my brain just immediately said I needed. No, you don't. It wasn't even a super pretty doll, but for some reason, I just felt like I needed this doll. I go back to my mom, and I show her this doll I intend on adding to my collection, and she tells me that there's prettier ones and that this one is a little too dirty and banged up. I just told her I felt like I needed this doll, but maybe she was right. At this moment, I agree with my mom, and I say maybe I should put this one back, and then the doll starts playing music super slow wind up ballerina music no i thought oh cool this doll has a music box you light that doll on fire (laughs) very very different reaction than i would have um oh cool this doll has a music box and i looked under its clothes to see where the wind was so i didn't hit it again there was no wind there was no music box what at all what Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where's the music mm-hmm. coming from? Yet somehow this doll was playing music. Hold on. My mom sees that it has no music box and she tells me, go put that damn doll back. We are not bringing a creepy as fuck haunted doll back home. So real for that mom. <laughs> so I go to put it back. But as I'm walking back to the aisle, the music starts getting louder and faster. By the time I reach the aisle again, the doll is blasting this creepy music so loud you could hear it from across the thrift store. People even started- And that's where it's about to be in two seconds when I throw it. <laughs> People even started looking at me because the music was that loud. It felt like I was being yelled at, screamed at, scolded for putting it back. That for some reason, me not bringing this doll home pissed it off so now it's yelling at me. I set the doll down on the shelf and I started walking away. The music still obnoxiously blaring through the entire store. As soon as I stepped out of the aisle, the music completely stopped. Not like a slow fade out or the wine slowed down. Record scratch stopped in the middle of a song. I think the doll realized I wasn't going back for it once I left the aisle. I still collect vintage porcelain dolls to this day, but I haven't gotten any haunted ones because I always do tests to make sure that they are now. Great question. You'll have to. Uh, hey, it's giving Jumanji. Yeah, please send us send us another email. We will read it about how you test these dolls, to see if they're haunty or not. I often wonder what would have happened if I had brought that doll home. Oh, good thing. And good job to my mom for making me leave it. That is all for now. But if I ever do bring home a haunted doll, you guys will be the first ones to hear about it. X O X O Mari. E. That makes <laughs> me feel so uncomfortable. Did you know my neighbor used to have like a whole house of of dolls? Listen, listen, listen. There are a lot of things that I I understand that people do that maybe is not my thing. But dolls, <laughs> old dolls, I think it was that one fucking Disney movie. Was it like the Boogeyman or something where all of the dolls in the one scene like turn their head towards the the bed? That fucking did it to me like immediately. Oh, oh, don't look under the bed. That's it. That's it. Don't look under the bed. Do you remember? There's like that one scene where shit starts happening under the bed and all I'm the dolls telling turn their you, head. That movie is legitimately fucking terrifying. I can't. I can't. I can't believe I watched that as a little kid and was I like, know. I love this shit. There's a lot of Disney Channel original movies like Halloween Town that yeah. I just watched with my kids. Pretty wholesome. Yeah. yeah. Calabar, whenever, spoiler alert, he goes all fucky. Like he's kind of scary. But that for was, the most part, it's yeah. not that bad. But don't look under the bed. Fucking horrifying. In the Halloween episode of Boy Meets World. Horrifying. The one when I was telling Taylor about the music out here, I was mm-hmm. like, it, I feel like I'm going to get a pencil yes. to the brain. <laughs> like, yes. We'll feel- always know he was this tall. <laughs> Jennifer Love Pfefferman. <laughs> now. Yes. I hate this. Okay. Let me tell you. I, there was a neighbor that I had in this yellow house. Mm-hmm. This yellow house has always freaked me out. And I don't remember... If it was, I'm 
Lillian. I used to dream about a yellow house. No, all I the know. Time as a little kid, remember? Because yes. then my my that's where I said that my imaginary friend lived. Well, yeah. Then I your imaginary so friend contacted us. <gasps> that's right, Emberlyn. Yes. How you been, girl? <laughs> okay. So it's next to my parents. It's across the alley, mm-hmm. and Lillian lived there when I was little, and she was uh, an older woman. Okay. So used to be the name that I wanted to name my child. Go Lillian. On. I named my first cat that. Lily. Mm-hmm. Lily of the Valley. Mm-hmm. One time I was convinced that a rainbow went into her chimney. And so I went to her house. She's got a pot of gold. You have to, to get chocolate. <laughs> and I can't remember if it was Lillian who had dolls or if it was the next family who had dolls that had a gr- uh. They had a daughter who was about our age and she kept, ha- she peed on my sister's bear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also she told people that we kept Randy, my youngest <laughs> sister in the basement like and made her work like Cinderella. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, what? we couldn't if we tried. Okay. <laughs> she is the scariest of us all. <laughs> She she is way stronger than any of us. Okay? She's the most strong willed of the whole family. <laughs> yeah, don't we can't tell her what to do. Um and it might have been that family that every single room you walked into was almost staged with dolls. No. Some of them as tall as us. <gasps> In life size dolls, full clothes, and like sometimes they would be looking out the window. So like if we looked over there and the lights were on, you could see the doll looking out the window. It was fucking terrifying, and I was like, no wonder that girl pees on bears. <laughs> like, yeah, look at that! A, everything in that house, <laughs> so spooky, <laughs> so spooky. Yeah, that's how I feel about haunted dolls. So no offense, Mari, if that's your shtick, but I just well, know I'll dolls never come to your house. Her shtick. No, that's true. Just dolls in general. Either way, I'm not coming over. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I love you. I can't be a part of that. I cannot. I feel like they're following me. It's the same with paintings. I can't have paintings of human people mm-hmm. in my house mm-hmm. because I feel like their eyes are following me. One time, my sister went with my mom to uh, a garage sale, mm-hmm. and there was a photo, like a painted portrait of Jesus. And <laughs> Hell yeah, Sam brother. was like, we have to take that home. What? And my mom's like, what and she's like we have to take that picture of jesus home because it's not right that he's being sold at a garage sale and so i didn't know that, that is this happened. such a sam move <laughs> i didn't know that this happened and so i walk up the steps <laughs> to go to my bedroom and jesus is right at the end of the hallway staring I I at me remember him being there. horrifying yeah. i'm like ah oh my what the god hell? yeah how did you get here <laughs> so scary sam's like i saved him from a garage <laughs> that's exactly what she said almost I verbatim i knew it <laughs> oh that's funny as fuck okay here we go this one's so scary <laughs> oh i can't wait i won't tell you the i won't tell you the title yep we'll just know okay here we go hi ladies my name is madison she her and i'm 29 living in west texas i've been listening since the beginning of the pod and y'all are awesome i've always wanted to reach out and thought this story was the perfect time to do so Let's go back to my college days. I was 21 and had just transferred to a large university. I was living off campus in an apartment, and I never experienced anything paranormal, evil, or spooky of any kind in my 21 years of life Mm -hmm. until this story. I had gone to sleep one November night and did my bedtime routine as usual. I've never had trouble sleeping, and this night wasn't any different than any other. I was sleeping like a baby until I wasn't. I was woken up. Not by any sounds or alarms, not by the birds outside or the janky pipes in my apartment. My room was dead quiet. What woke me was a sinking feeling in my gut and the realization that I was unable to move my body. Not the sleep paralysis. Yeah, she's sure. Oh, it's. My heart began to race and I internally told myself, it's fine, just try to breathe and open your eyes. I tried taking some deep breaths, but panic was settling in. I managed to open my eyes. It was already morning and the sun had started to pour into my bedroom. I thought to myself, okay, I'm fine. It's just my body telling me it's time to get up for the day. That's what I told myself until I glanced towards, my, towards the door to my room and I saw him standing there. Mm-mm. Standing in the corner of my room was a little boy staring at me. I still remember every detail of his appearance. He looked about six years old. His skin was extremely pale and his eyes were sunken in. He had brown hair and gray eyes. He wore a navy blue and white collared shirt, navy shorts, and white knee-high socks. This little boy looked like he belonged in a different time period and he definitely did not belong in my bedroom. 
terrified, all I could do was stare back at him and try my hardest to move my goddamn arms. Mm -hmm. I couldn't move and all I could do and all he did was stare. This can't be real. I thought it can't be real. My heart was still racing. I closed my eyes and worked up everything in me to turn my body. Like every problem in my life, I figured if I ignored it, it would go away. <laughs> Fair Please enough. Please tell me she's not going to open her eyes and it's going to be closer. No, not necessarily. <laughs> I managed to turn over in bed with my back now facing where the boy stood. I squeezed my eyes shut and pulled the covers over my ears to hide myself and wish for him to go away. I laid there for what seemed like an eternity. Right as I felt myself coming out of this hysteria, I felt it. A cold breeze in the back of my neck. Mm -hmm. It felt as if someone was kneeling beside my bed and blowing on the nape of my neck, but their breath was ice cold. It sent a chill down my spine, and I freaked the fuck out. I was still trying to rationalize it. That was definitely my ceiling fan, I thought. I managed to look up at the ceiling, and my fan had been off all night. The boy's on the fan. <laughs> I threw off all my covers and was fully prepared to fight this little boy. Except, I'm sure you guessed it, he was gone, and there was no trace of anything I had just experienced. I've never seen this boy again, and I've not had another sleep paralysis episode. I still try to gas myself to make sense of it all, but I can't come up with anything. It still makes me feel icky, and I get goose pimps every time I relive this story. Hope it adds to your spooky season. Love, Madison. <laughs> Thank you for that, Madison. Thanks, Madison. <laughs> everything, everything that you were describing was reminding me of... The little boy that I saw in my doorway. I know. I knew that. And that's, that's I why like... I was like, please don't say he's going to get closer. Although, I mean, I guess he did still. But she just wasn't there to see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because my the little boy that I saw mm -hmm. had dark hair, gray skin. <gasps> um, but it, was all, it, it wasn't like gray, gray, like ghost gray. It was like pale. Dead. Just kind of like malnourished. Mm. Pale. Like all the colors. Me as a child been drained kind of <laughs> my mom used to say i looked like that every time i got sick I'd be like well we can tell sierra's not faking it this time because she looks sickly <laughs> she, she looks like gray she's giving victorian child and i was like mom uh yeah but he was wearing striped wet clothes oh my mean, god he'd been swimming the long swim i guess I guess. Yeah. And then, yeah, I remember he was in my doorway and I closed my, that's one of the reasons why I started sleeping with my door closed. Yeah. Not fires. Not fires. Certainly not fires. Yeah. His haunted little boys. Haunted <laughs> wet little boys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But because when I opened my eyes, he was right next to my bed <laughs> and he looked really mad. And I was like, do I wake my parents up or what is Will scarier? They yell at me? <laughs> what is scarier? My parents or this, this haunted little wet child That's so real <laughs> that is so real is it wrong that i'm kind of hoping that because yesterday i said to ollie hey if you're gonna still have a fever we can't go trick-or-treating no that's that we said that about Sawyer. so like that's just the situation mm -hmm. i'm not trying to force you to take medicine or anything but understand, if you're going to choose not to do the things that are going to help you feel better, you might miss out on something you're really excited about. And he's like, I don't even want to go trigger training. And I, fought, I had to fight everything in me to be like, I don't really want to fucking go either, dude. <laughs> I'm doing this shit for you. So I guess we're not going. <laughs> so I've been cool. like battling internally. Like, do I just like go with that and don't do it? Just don't do it. Or what? Potentially. I know. We'll if it see. were me. And you are. <laughs> and I, I would. <laughs> I love an excuse to get out of shit. I do as well. Uh, okay. Here we go. We have two sleepwalking ones. A UFO. I don't know that we've had a UFO. Okay. We'll do a UFO right now. Here we go. Okay. Hi, Sierra and Jerry. And then we'll do one of the sleepwalking ones. And then I have a finisher that I think is a good one to end it. A finisher? It's not, it's not scary. It's a more lighthearted one. Oh, I, okay. I okay. It okay. A cleanser? Creepy. Yeah. Okay. But it's more like a hee hee ha ha. Okay, okay, here we go. The UFO. Hi, Sierra and Jerry. Not sure if you consider this Who? a scandal. Sierra and Jerry? Who? Sierra and Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sierras. <laughs> See, I love how many times you do that to me. <laughs> Whenever I say anything about going to the roadhouse, she goes, where? And I'm like, the roadhouse. The roadhouse. She goes, where? <laughs> and I go, the roadhouse. And then she's like, where? And I go, the road. <laughs> you say it. You That's say so it. so funny. It takes me so long every time to catch on, and I'm like, I get it. 
Um, okay, not sure if you consider this a scandal, but it sure is a crazy story. So I thought I'd share. Growing up, my my she her thirty. That's them. Okay, mom who is she, her, 57. Got it. Was always someone I would describe as spiritual but not religious. She always was sure to let me form my own opinions while sharing hers as just that, opinions, and not the final word. Word. Not world. (laughs) Word. Word, bitch. She told me about the energy she'd experienced from souls passing, angels, etc., and is a big part of why I believe in the paranormal. One story she always recounted was about seeing a UFO on Powerline Road a story that never once changed in any detail. Powerline Road in her hometown is just what you'd think, a long country road with power lines dipping up and down on both sides of the road. Seeing it for myself, I can see why any non-Earth dweller would be drawn to the area because of the electric energy and the farm animals Mm. that are all around, Mm -hmm. that are all around the otherwise quiet street. A lot of what she says just makes sense to me, and I might be biased because I've never known my mom to have any reason to lie or make things up. I've been listening to the podcast ever since finding you on TikTok two or so years ago, and I kept thinking I've got to submit my mom's story. I begged her to type out her account of it and got her to do just that. So here it is for you, folks. Feel free to shorten for the pot if needed. So here we go. This is mom's. It's in red. This is mom's account. Ready? It's so cute how it starts. I am a 57-year-old wife and mother from Central North Carolina. I love that. This is I don't know so why. cute. I was like, uh, this is immediately, the most I love it. UFO story. It's like I'm not gonna tell my mom's story. I'm gonna let her tell yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I would never. No. <laughs> I'm gonna talk over you, mommy. <laughs> yeah, every time. This is what I witnessed my senior year of high school, 1984 to 1985. Okay. I was spending a great deal of time at my boyfriend's house on the weekends. I returned home on Sunday evening after one of these visits. I came into my room and put my stuff down and started to get ready for bed. We lived in the western end of the, co- of the county, an area that had huge power lines running through all the properties near Highway 87 with pastures and cattles and horses all around. I think it's cattle, not plural. That was me. I added the S because I'm a <laughs> fucking idiot. Sorry, mom. <laughs> I can't remember if it was me or my sister, four years younger, that I know that had noticed it at first, but our bedroom windows faced the back pasture where our three horses were kept, and there seemed to be someone in a truck backing up near the barn at the top of the rise. My sister and I huddled at my open bedroom window with the lights off to see what they were up to. We thought maybe there were people trying to check out if there was anything worth stealing in there. Then the truck's reverse lights did the oddest thing. They came together like a bar. What? This was no truck. My sister and I got my mother and we watched from the window together. I called my boyfriend and described what was happening. All three horses were completely still, not even a flick of a tail. We gasped as we saw a metallic sphere at least six to ten feet wide floating over the pasture. It had lights going around the middle of the sphere, yellow, red, and blue, that flashed one at a time as it made its way closer to the house in a sweeping zigzag pattern. What? I know. What? Mm -hmm. My mother seemed to suddenly have a reaction to it being near our horses and got up, left my bedroom quickly, and headed out to the back porch. Not the horses. Uh Uh-huh. Fuck you, kids. (laughs) I gotta get it. Save the horses. I know. Horses are fucking expensive. I know. Um, And beautiful. They are. And so are your kids, I'm sure. (laughs) Sorry. And expensive. (laughs) And true. My sister and I watched, scared out of our minds, as Mama headed out into the backyard as the sphere floated not more than four or five car lengths from her. The lights on it brightened, and while it had made hardly anything more than a faint whirring sound before, it was now buzzing furiously. The air was electric. You could almost smell it. We begged Mama to come back inside. She finally relented. Every step she took back towards the house quieted the angry buzzing. Mama came back into my bedroom. Hearts pumping, we all saw the sphere float around in different places across the pasture, catching the light as it went in and out of the shadows of the trees in that same sweeping pattern. Horses still not making a move. How eerie to see farm animals just being completely still. still. That's like, you know, they at least flick their tails. Do you know, we were uh, driving on the highway. I was with grandma. And she looked over and she was like, oh, my God, those horses are so still. Isn't mm-hmm. that crazy that they're so still? And I looked and I go, those are fake horses, Grandma. <laughs> those are not real. 
<laughs> she's like, I swear they normally have real ones. And I was like, they do. I, I have seen real ones, but those ones are definitely statues. So <laughs> that explains is. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they replaced yours as a statue. Uh-huh. <laughs> Could have been. Those pesky aliens. Um, okay. It soon floated over a power pole that had an outdoor light, hovered in place for a few moments, and then lifted straight up into the sky until we could no longer see it. It was the strangest feeling I had ever felt in my life. In my gut, I knew I was seeing something that I had no business seeing. It made me feel unhinged. If my senses weren't lying, a lot of things no longer made sense. There were at least two more instances where the sphere showed up at our house again. What? I was not there to witness either of those, but my sister and mom were. In one of those events, they said it floated directly over the house into the front yard as they were grooming the horses out there one evening. I do not know if what we witnessed that night was alien or something from our government or a different one, but it was not normal and definitely one of the scariest things I've ever been through. I thoroughly believe that had my mother not retreated into the house when she did, she might have been killed or seriously hurt. Okay, now this is back to Kayla. Hope you ladies enjoy her story as much as I have. Love you ladies dearly and appreciate everything you stand for as humans, women, and plain old good people. Aww. Sincerely, Kayla. Thank you, Kayla. And thank, thank you, you so Kayla's much. mom, for your yeah. story. That's so crazy, right? The fact right? that it was buzzing because mom was getting close to it. Oh, so Almost like an angry hornet's nest. Ooh. Like, listen. You better fucking back off. Yes. What is it about aliens and buzzing? Like, farm animals? Good question. Why do they like farm animals? So I much? don't know. Is it because? Hey. <laughs> is it because like typically farmland takes up like a lot of area? Could be, and so there's less. It's less populated. That definitely could be. But like I know that in some areas they blame the aliens for like cattle dying. Like they're they're like and crop eat, circles and like eating it. Oh yeah, what's the deal with crop circles? What's the deal with <laughs> crop circles? Well, to be fair, we eat those cows too. So who the fuck are we to say? Not like they do. You sure? <laughs> we don't leave the carcai <laughs> <laughs> just like fucking steaming with like you've seen this personally on a documentary. <laughs> I sure have. I sure they have. just like plopped out a steaming car guy. <laughs> yes, you've never plopped out a steaming car guy before. I'm pretty sure it had it was like so it was like rotted, but like it was just alive the day before. So like the the level of decay that had happened like didn't make sense. So they have like enzymes in their mouths that are rotting. What was the word you just Mouth. <laughs> Is that mouth but weird? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't married a mooth. <laughs> we don't need counseling. I don't know. I'm just being silly because <laughs> I'm scared. I don't know. I don't like. There's a about chance aliens. you know that. There's a chance that I'm completely wrong about all of it. I think it. it's scarier almost if it isn't aliens. If it's something from the government or another government, just like scoping shit out. But why would that be the shit that they're scoping out? You never know. I don't. Because I don't and know I never Kayla, will. and I don't know what's happening in her family. Maybe Mama's got the secret. <laughs> sauce. <laughs> That's what I've heard about Mama. Mama's <laughs> do be having the secret sauce. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. They were like, what are you fucking hiding? <laughs> but why were the horses still? They were spooked. <laughs> I would be, I'd be like, ah. Yeah, but when horses are spooked, they like, they whinny. And they neigh and they get on their haunches. So true. So true. All the times that I've known horses. They run away. So what they've done. Yeah. They don't stand still. I don't know. All animals, when there's like weather happening, they run. They get the fuck out of Dodge. You're probably right. Except some are, you know, we don't know about horses. Do they have flight, freeze, fawn? No. Fight. They have fight or flight. Fight, flight. That's the one I was They have fight or flight. They don't have freeze. I don't think. So that's just humans? (laughs) Farted. (laughs) You've been farted, bitch. (laughs) I had the 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 French onion soup. (laughs) So I'm just a farted girl. You are like me. (laughs) I'm just a farted girl. Sitting over there eating soup and farting and you're like... (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, so me. I've never been more you. How do you know it wasn't you who just farted? <laughs> Could have been. Could have been. That was your ass out of me. That's not my fault. That was my gas out of your ass. 
I like that. that That's a fun. fun little rhyme. That was fun. All right, here's a scary one, and then I'll do I'll do two more. Here we go. They're okay. kind of shorter. Sort of. This is a sleepwalking one. Hi, friends. My name is Allie She Her, and I have a sleepwalking story that multiple people have described as the most insane story they've heard. It was a high-key traumatic experience at the time, but I've healed and can now look back at it and laugh. Hopefully, y'all can enjoy the absolute bat shittery. So these two are kind of scary slash funny. The next okay. two I have for you. A little bit of a cleanser, mm-hmm. but still spooky. This story involves my ex-boyfriend, and we'll call him B. Okay. okay. B had been a sleepwalker ever since we started dating. Usually... B would just wake up and be like, there's bugs on the ceiling or something (laughs) like that. And I just tell him to go back to sleep. Pretty normal stuff. Things started to escalate after COVID. Started with a night where B woke up thinking he was choking and dying. And when I was trying to calm him down, he threw the glass cup on the bedside table at me and it shattered at my feet. Luckily, no one was hurt by the broken glass, but it was scary. Um, Little did I know things were about to get way worse. A few weeks later, I woke up to him screaming bloody murder, fighting our dog. (gasps) Okay. The dog? Yes. Like literally on the floor wrestling the dog (laughs) and screaming like he is absolutely terrified like the dog's attacking. Yes. Um, While the dog is barking and growling, also sounding terrified. It straight up sounded like he was being attacked and it was the scariest thing to wake up to. I jumped off the bed and tried to wake him or at least break them apart. But as soon as I get him off the dog, he jumps up and hightails it to out of our bedroom to the kitchen yelling, need a knife, need a knife. Oh, no, 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 no. By the time I got out of our bedroom and out to the kitchen, he had one of the large kitchen knives in his hand and is running back to the bedroom. Mm I was able to fight the knife out of his hand. What? I know. Bitch, as soon as I hear him say, I need a knife, door is closed. Everything is in front of it. That's it. Yeah. And able to wake him. Oh, she probably was so scared he was going to hurt himself, though. Do it at that point. I'm (laughs) sorry. I'm not a part of this. You're not going to come at me with that. First of all, you're running with it. That's That's safety 101. Uh (laughs) We learned that in kindergarten. (laughs) So if you are going to do that, that's not that's not my fault. Not my I'm not going to be responsible for it. I am going to protect myself and my sweet, sweet dog. Yeah. That you already were beaten up. Yeah. I hope you're not still with this person. or this is No, ex-boyfriend. Be- you're good. Got it, got it, got it. Cool. Um, I was able to fight the knife out of his hand and wake him up before he could hurt anyone, but all three of us were very rattled. Turns out he was having a very vivid dream slash hallucination that the dog was a massive black wolf with red eyes. That was attacking us, and he was doing his best to defend the two of us. Like, I get the concept, but it's still so scary. I when understand, you're like, but... Um, turns out, both of us screaming in the middle of the night was enough to worry our upstairs neighbor who came to check on us. He said it sounded like we were being attacked by a bear. And he also called the cops. So to add a cherry on top of the horrific night, I had to talk to the police pantsless. <laughs> oh, no. Shout out to the cops who pulled me into the hallway and away from my partner to talk to me. It could have saved my life if I was in a domestic violence situation. And I will always appreciate the thought and care taken when they were questioning me. Hell yeah. So important. The situation freaked us both the fuck out, and we proceeded to start locking up all the knives and other sharp objects Mm -hmm. every single night. Things returned mostly to normal, but about six weeks later, we had another episode that started the same as the first, but luckily with no knives. This time, B again dreamt that we were being attacked by a wolf and was on the floor trying to gouge the dog's eyes (gasps) out with his thumb. (sighs) Whose dog is that? I think both of theirs. I was once again able to break them apart, but this time it left me with a scar on my arm that I still have to this day. After that, we started padlocking the dog in her crate at night, which I mean, it sucks, but like totally understandable yeah. for her safety. Um, we've never How had about we padlock him in a crate. <laughs> we've never had an episode like that again, thanks to the precautions, but he would wake up screaming like he was dying regularly for the next several months. Turns out this was a mix of sleep apnea, which can cause dreamlike hallucinations due to low oxygen in your brain. That's like when you can't get enough air when you're breathing. Okay, fair. Um, poor sleep hygiene and then increased stress from COVID. And eventually this went away with treatment and lifestyle changes. Well, that's good. That was not the reason the relationship ended. It just wasn't the right relationship. But he's a great guy, and I hope he never has to sleep fight another dog against his will. <laughs> Sorry this is so long, but the experience was absolutely bananas and deserved a thorough explanation. 
Anywho, y'all are the tits. Thank you for being unapologetically yourselves and encouraging others to do the same. Oh, thank you, Allie. Jesus that is Christ, so fucking scary. I love that you were like, "This is a kind of fun one." Well, t- <laughs> for who? <laughs> For who? You're right. It wasn't fun at all. <laughs> Not even a little bit. I think sleepwalking can be fun until it gets to that point. Like, I just meant the sleep talking, like, get the bugs are on the ceiling. Yeah, but that, was, that was the beginning. That was the very <laughs> beginning and, like, the smallest part of the story. I no longer I'm have so sorry. any trust for you. Yeah, this next one might be also scary. But it's fun, sort of, but scary. Is this the last one? Mm-hmm. Great. Get ready to be booed. Happy Halloween, everybody. I hope you're enjoying this. Never again. Just kidding. We got so many ghost stories that this will become such a fun little regular thing that we'll add in because we got so many. I couldn't even go through them all. This one is called This Ghost Likes Boobs. Oh, a possible ghost story. Oh, yeah. Hi, ladies. My name is Kelsey. She, her. I have a story that might just be funny or it might indicate I have a pervy ghost. (laughs) You decide. I have two small children, and as I'm sure you know, it's hard to find time to shower when you have little kids. I also live in a 120-year-old house, so odds are there's at least a few spirits hanging out. But my toxic trait is assuming I can befriend any ghost, so it's never bothered me. (laughs) Honestly, same. I feel that. So one night, I ended up showering around midnight. Oh my god, again. This is when I have to shower because I have to wait till my kid's like dead asleep to freaking- Yes. The kids were in bed, and so was my husband. The house was totally dark and quiet. When I got out of the shower, I walked out of the bathroom butt naked. I didn't turn on any lights because the big lights are pure evil on my neurodivergent <laughs> senses, and I like creeping through the dark like an assassin. <laughs> Again, same. Uh-huh. I had to walk through the playroom to get to the stairs to go up to my bedroom. As I'm walking through the playroom, a voice speaks out of the darkness. Hi, you toots. Ew. Ew. Uh-huh. Needless to say, I nearly jumped out of my skin, and I'm pretty sure my heart momentarily stopped. After a good 10 seconds of pure panic, I realized it was my kid's toy trolley from Daniel Tiger's neighborhood that was sitting on the shelf on the other side of the room with nothing touching it. I'm attaching a little video so you can hear it. I'm going to play that. (laughs) I sure am. I hate that. I want you to know that's why I said it the way that I did, because I listened to it before I... Okay, anyways. Can I tell you the um puzzle that Sawyer has yes. with the animals yes that's the puzzle that would go off in my house by itself I at didn't, random times I didn't put any batteries in it she's never been able to make it sound sorry mom you got it for her. best wishes because mine was turned off <gasps> and one of the batteries I think was dead and or out and it still made sound ah! well luckily nobody goes near her room at nighttime ah, oh sorry. what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> our outro music started playing <laughs> We got the spooky. My goodness. All right, here we go. I'm attaching a little video so you can hear it, but it's one of many buttons with Daniel Tiger characters that say little catchphrases. That's a very weird one. Who says toots? Yeah, right. And for some toy, right? And for some reason, it played the only one that was sort of relevant to me walking around naked. (laughs) Yeah, right? Fingers crossed it was a random toy malfunction. I've never experienced anything like it again, but knowing I can't fully rule out a pervy ghost is slightly unnerving. If it was a ghost, here's to hoping his final unfinished business was to see some boobs and scare the shit out of someone before he passed on. And now he's at peace. He's like, this will definitely make her nipples hard. (laughs) (laughs) I want to see that. (laughs) Thank you for everything you do. It was listen. It was listening to you two talk about ADHD that led me to getting screened and just recently diagnosed with ADHD oh, as a 36-year-old. Yay! I'm just beginning this journey of treatment, but as but just understanding how my brain works differently has made a huge impact. Love, Kelsey. Oh, here we go. Kelsey. I don't want to hear this. Bad. I fucking hate kids' toy sounds. Oh, <gasps> shut the fuck up. Play it again, but play it directly Ready? in here. I know. Hi, it. Hearing that at midnight in the dark, in the dark, no, while I'm naked, no, no, <laughs> absolutely not. That toy would be gone, yeah, absolutely gone, yeah. Anyway, well. <laughs> thank you guys for sharing your stories. We I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> Sherry says with a grimace on your face, I keep forgetting that I have lipstick on, yeah, and I keep like she overlined that bitch too. Looks good. It doesn't. No, it's okay. 
<laughs> it looks good. Does it? It looks like and me. It's fine. And you look. You should it look like. It looks like, like you. if you had to like live outside for a week, <laughs> and then also were was hit by a vehicle. I've been there before for sure. Did you look like me? Kind of. You look related now. A little oh. bit. Yeah. Anyway, that's that on your spooky stories, everybody. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Be safe out there. Be festive, but yeah, be safe. Yeah. And um, remember, everything you do is rooted in witchcraft. <gasps> so true. All right. We love you so much. We'll see you next week. All right. We're out. Goodbye. <gasps> Boom.